Shall we live? We are live. Hi guys. Um, all right, give me, let me pull up something really quickly. And then, all right, awesome. Okay, so, good evening. Good evening, good evening. It's 10 o'clock on the East Coast. I don't know where you're at, but it's 10 o'clock by me. Um, <clears throat> I have a pretty bad cold, so hence this, but also uh, I sound like a boy. Um, so my voice is a little scratchy tonight, so I will try to breathe in between talking. I know that <laughs> I don't usually breathe as I'm talking, so hopefully I, uh, I don't lose my breath or lose my voice, but hi Becky. Um, but uh, that's what we're working with tonight. So where are we at tonight as well? So we're in somebody's office tonight with this green screen. It's not my office. I don't know where we're at. <laughs> but it's the background I chose today. Um, so if you guys know them, you know that I love my green screen. <laughs> I just like playing with it. I just like messing around with it. Um, but can we also talk about how... Um, okay, we're back. How I spent... Before I get into what I have to talk about. I just need to tell you this, okay? I spent literally 20 minutes um, deciding between four, <laughs> deciding between four different backgrounds, <laughs> 20 minutes. And I ended up with this background of which was not one of the four that I was choosing between. So. It's about to be Libra season because it's my birthday coming up in a few days and I know that it's supposed to be Libra season. And if you know anything about astrology, I'm saying this with full humor behind it, that you know very well what Libras are all about. I can't decide anything for the life of me. So four different backgrounds, 20 minutes, and I ended up with one that wasn't even one of the four choices. So <laughs> we're here. Okay. Let's talk. What was my title of this live? I don't even know. Why you need to convince yourself. For, okay. Let's talk. All right. So I'm really excited about this topic actually because we just came out with a new product yesterday and it brought up some discussion. Okay. And um, I've seen this happen so many times. Um, and I think that, that it really needs to be spoken about because it does go hand in hand with psychology. And if you've been following me for a while, then you know that I, I really am into um, human behavior and the psychology in general, but in psychology of sales even more so because it's, it fascinates me. Um, people fascinate me and just like how we work. So I'm, I'm a big believer in the fact that um, if you're going to be really good in a business and in a business of selling something. Hold on. This is really pissing me off. Look at this. Hold on. This is pissing me off. There you go. There's my ADHD. Where are we going? I can't do anything without. Oh, there we go. See? Okay. All right. So we're here. So um, I'm a big believer in all that stuff. Okay. And thank you. Um, and something that I see happen so much, so much, and this is all across the board, okay? What I'm going to talk about, I'm not mentioning names. I'm not speaking about anybody specifically. So don't sit down and be like, oh, she's talking about me. I'm not talking about you. If I am, then, you know, if the shoe fits, wear it. But I have nobody in mind directly, okay? So just, just keep that in mind. So what I see happen so much, especially in network marketing, because I'm around it so much with other companies that I see and people that I follow and even in the company that I'm with, okay? What I see happen so much is people that get involved and they see the price of the products and or just a product, okay? And all of a sudden, it's... I don't, I mean, what am I supposed to tell people? Isn't this getting a little too expensive or isn't this too expensive? How am I supposed to sell this? Okay. In cases where there's a new product, which is why I'm bringing this up because it brought up some discussion yesterday between my team and it was a really good discussion. And 
you know, in a case of a new product, for example, some people might say, you know, well, how am I supposed to convince people that, you know, to buy this now? Or, oh, this, this new product is too expensive. How am I supposed to convince people to buy it? So here's what I have to say about this. I have to say a lot about this, but here's what I really have to say. This I want you to take, like, just take, if you're going to take anything from this, take this, okay? If, in my mind, in my opinion, if you, ha if you feel that you have to convince um, a potential customer or a current customer or, you know, a whatever a future customer to buy the product that you're selling or that you're going to be selling, whatever it might be, then your problem is that you have not yet convinced yourself. It's not about convincing your customer. If you feel that you have to convince your customer or anybody for that matter, or potential for example, to buy your product or join your business, then you have, you need to look at the fact that you haven't convinced yourself of it yet. Because if you did, and I talk about this a lot, if you love the product, if you love the business, you don't need convincing. Like you, you don't need to be worrying about how you're going to sell the product or how you're going to tell somebody about the business because you know that you love the product and you love the business that you're in. So that's, there's no, there's no question there. Does that make sense? So if you feel that you are, you know, like I said, having to, or if you're afraid that you're going to need to, oh, how am I going to convince somebody? How am I going to convince them to buy this product when it's so expensive? Well, well, here's the thing with that. My friend Andrea said today, and it's so very true, and I wish she was on here right now, but her, her internet sucks. So <laughs> if you're on here, I'm sorry. Um, I would have totally had her on as a guest because what she said was so very true. But what she said was that, you know, her, how she views a dollar or a hundred dollars, for example, is not going to be the same as what somebody else views a hundred dollars. And that's really, really, really true, right? Like, a dollar is not a dollar, a dollar, a dollar, a dollar. It's not. It's not. Because how I view a dollar is not going to be the same way that you view a dollar. So we should never, ever decide for somebody else what's too expensive. Andrea, look at her. I just saw her. I just got on. We should never, ever, ever decide what is too expensive for somebody else. Like, if you think that it's too expensive then we're going to get into this in a second. But if you t think it's too expensive, um, then one, like I said, you need to convince yourself of why it's not or what, what the value is in it, right? And two, your energy is going to be put out there in your actions and in your words and everybody else is going to think it's too expensive because you're going to end up, what's going to happen is you're going to end up, hold on, what is, Dan, get off the internet. It just said your stream quality has been automatically lower because internet connection was not fast enough. Dan, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Facebook Live. Um, so oh, here we go. Here we go. Don't do it, Jessica. Don't do it. ADHD, ADHD. Don't do it. Um, okay. I'm just going to go start talking. So if you're thinking that the product is too expensive, right? There is no way on God's green earth that you're going to be able to sell that product to anybody without having to try and like change up your words or change up your thoughts on it. You need to know why, even if the product is a thousand dollars, okay? What is the value behind it? Because if you don't believe in the product, then it doesn't matter if it's a dollar or a thousand dollars, you're not going to be able to sell that product because of your energy behind it, because of your belief behind it, which goes back to what I just said about how you need to convince yourself first. As a matter of fact, you need to convince yourself and only yourself, not other people. Because if you need to convince other people, then you're not in the right business. Like you, it, it, it doesn't work that way. You're doing it wrong. If you feel like you need, excuse me, to convince other people to buy your product rather than you just sharing your excitement about it, then you are doing this business wrong. You are doing the business of selling wrong. I hope that makes sense. So let's go back to the psychology of it, right? I, I talk about this a lot. I talk about energy and all that stuff, and I'm a big believer in that because it's very, very real, okay? So if you are thinking that your product is expensive, okay? <laughs> First of all, like, are you using your product? Are you seeing the, the amazing benefits of your product, whatever that product might be? 
right? Because that alone is going to convince you that if it's, if it's that good of a product, whatever that product might be, if you're using it and you're in love with it, then it's priceless. I hope that makes sense too. So let me just get, okay. There was something that was popping up on my screen that was annoying me. All right. I'm not doing too bad tonight with the attention here. Okay. So yes, sharing is caring. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so if you're having to convince other people, like I said before, you haven't yet convinced yourself. And what that means is this, when you talk to a potential customer about your product, you're automatically, because of your lack of belief in it, because of your lack of belief in the price and, and you know, your passion behind it, for example, you're going to be talking to every single potential, potential customer or current customer going into the conversation already with doubt. If you go into a conversation already with doubt and already thinking that you have to try and give them all the reasons on why it's the price that it is, it, you're not going to make the sale. I'm just, I'm, I'm being completely honest with you. You are not going to make the sale because you yourself aren't convinced. And again, it goes back to what I said in the beginning. If you're not convinced, nobody else is going to be. That's the bottom line of it. You have to be convinced yourself. And that's the end of that, right? So your energy from you and your lack of belief in the price, the product, whatever it might be, is going to have a trickle effect into the conversation that you have with your potential customer or your current customer if you're offering them a new product, for example, right? So let me tell you, here's a perfect example. Okay, and I'm using this example again because our company just put out a new product, which is amazing, right? And there's been some talk around my team about it and some really good conversation came of it and hence the reason for this live. But I'm going to use this as an example, okay? So we have a brand new product, okay? Brand new Synergy product. Synergy is our CBD oil. It's our, it's our CBD line, our CBD oil line. And we now have a 500 milligram CBD. Prior to this, we had 150 and 250, right? And we had, I had so many customers asking me for 500, okay? Would you, are you, are you going to have a higher milligram? Are you going to have a higher milligram? Yes. I don't know when, but we will. Well, it, when is today? All right. So it happened. So this new product is, I think, 119 um, as like a VIP, I don't know. I think as a VIP customer, it just got released. So I'm still learning. So our prior product was 59. And then the other one, I think was 79. Okay. Now there was a jump from that. Why was there a jump from that? Well, because the milligram is higher. So it's a stronger dose. It's a stronger converse, uh, conver It's a stronger concentration of the CBD oil. Okay. Now that shouldn't really need explanation, but that's just something like I had customers ask me today, well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is that you're going from 250 milligrams to 500 milligrams. Um, it's a much higher potency. So you're going to get a lot more out of it. Hence the price, right? It, hence the price increase. Also, it's broad spectrum. It's a lot more expensive to make a broad spectrum CBD than to just give you a full spectrum or a CBD isolate, which every other company has. We are different. We have broad spectrum, which is the best of both worlds. Okay, there's a whole thing to it. Now, my customers are fine with it, right? Because I'm fine with it. Because I know that for a higher quality product or more of a, of a concentration of this specific product, I know that... That's why it's more expensive. It's not more expensive because we're trying to just spend, uh, have you spend more money. It's more expensive because there's more expense that goes into making that product. There's more to it. it this could be anything. You could be selling paper. It doesn't matter. It, it, it's, it's, if there's, the process is, is greater, the concentration is higher, the dose is more, it doesn't matter, right? And another thing with CBD anyway, and this is just for an example, if it's a higher milligram and you're getting more out of it, you may end up potentially using less of it so the bottle will last longer. So really, you're spending less in the end if you add up the amount of times that you would buy a cheaper price product. Does that make sense? So like, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything here. Yup. Yup. Thank you. Um, so why are you so big? I'm just going to put you down here. Okay. So... This is how I'm just explaining it to people. Now, that could be for any product. It could be for a brand new shake. It could be a brand new, you know, skincare. It could be a brand new lipstick. It doesn't matter. It's all about the quality, the ingredients, all of those things. Okay, so I know why products cost more. 
you know why products cost more. So my customers are going to know why that costs more. Nobody's holding a gun to their head to, to buy it. If they want to upgrade, they can. If they don't want to try it, they don't have to, right? For me, I always downsell in order to upsell. And I do that to save people money, but I also do that because I want them to trust me, okay? So going back to everything that I was just saying, that was being used as an example because it's very easy for somebody to not have the confidence and the belief in their product and the price and why the product is now more expensive or a new product that they're selling is on the higher side of what they were selling prior to that. It's very easy for somebody to go into a conversation with a potential customer and and kind of just like have this wall up because they don't understand why it's ex it's expensive now. But here's the thing, and Andrea said this today, and I'll say it again. What your your version of expensive could be completely different from somebody else's version of expensive. And I I know that you just wrote something else up here. Here we go. What'd you say? This is such a good topic because so many people stop themselves short of their full potential and thus their own grand success because they doubt, they think they need to convince, oversell, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, that is exactly what happens. Um, and you don't mod, you don't have to justify the price. You're absolutely right. Like I don't own the company. I own my lash brand, right? And if I want to mark up my price because we have, you know, a pair of lashes that is, I know like super high quality, this super crazy high quality style that's different from my other pairs, then I'm going to mark up the price in order to, to make a profit, but also to make back what I put in, in order to make that lash. Does that make sense? So like, this is just the business of sales. So if you're having to think about, okay, all the things I have to talk about in order to convince somebody to buy, then you haven't convinced yourself yet of why somebody should buy that. You shouldn't have to think of all the reasons as to why somebody should buy it based on the current price. Like I've seen this so much. I've been in network marketing for seven years now and I've and it's not a long time in the grand scheme of things. And with people that have been in network marketing, it's not that long, but it's long enough for me to see in my first year that, people get like completely short-sighted with with price when they're selling a product and it's like like listen you don't know what somebody is willing to spend on something i know people that spend 300 plus dollars a month on another network marketing company's products it comes as a package and all it is is shakes but people spend 300 plus dollars a month for these shakes like is $119 or $100 or even $50 is nothing to those people, right? And that's not one person. It's a gazillion people that this company is in business for that reason, okay? So, like, again, another thing that you have to realize is that there are going to be people that, whether it's a dollar or a thousand dollars, they're not going to be convinced because you're not convinced in the benefit and the value of the product that you're selling, they need to convince themselves as to why they might need it. Again, you can literally be giving something away for free and somebody might not want it because they don't see the value in it. So if somebody is not really wanting to like bite on whatever it is you're selling, there's two reasons for this. One, you're not convinced. So you're not portraying that, that you know, confidence in what you're selling and you're not telling people why it's so important and why they need it, right? That's number one. Number two, they don't see the value in it. So they don't think they need it. And well, there's three. Three, <laughs> whatever the product is, some people might never ever need it. So that's, if you're at a standstill with your product selling, okay? Again, whatever product it might be, you could own the business or you could be a part of the business. It doesn't matter. If you're at a standstill, it's, it's mainly those three things. Because at the end of the day, if somebody wants something, here goes my voice. I told you guys I'm sick. At the end of the day, if somebody wants something, I have seen people, I have been one of those people, that you could be broke as a joke. If you want something, you're going to make it happen to get that something. I have been there. And I have had customers in my prior company. I said this a lot at the time. In my prior company, I had customers that were on food stamps saying, I don't have any money. 
but I need this product. So I'm borrowing the money. Like, do you see what I'm saying? When people want something, it doesn't matter how much it is if they really want it, if they really want it. But your problem, if this is you, is that you're stopping that from even happening because you're already going into the conversation because of your lack of belief and your lack of confidence and, and your lack of convincing yourself of why people might need that product, whatever the product is, you're going into that conversation and you're already putting the wall up. You're already stopping them. You're already trying to answer questions that haven't been asked. You're already trying to tell them, oh, well, you know, you know, it's a higher price, but like, what if they don't care? What if they don't care about that? Like, don't you, you got to stop doing that. And that's where you're stopping your sale. You're stopping your sale because you are judging all of your potential customers on what you believe. You might think $100 is a lot of money, but your potential customers, that might be like chump change to them. You don't know how much they make in a year. You don't know how much they have on the side. You don't know if they are like literally compulsive spenders that have no money, but they'll buy whatever they want. You don't know. All you're doing is putting yourself into your customer's shoes as you, rather than just listening to them and listening to what they might want and they might need. So all you're doing is ruining the sale. Does that make sense? Sorry, guys. I need to like, I'm going to read through these comments. My voice is going. Um, am I saying it? <laughs> um, hold on. I'm going to scroll up so I can have other people talk because I knew it was going to happen. Okay, hold on. Um, yep. 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 We're not... How beautiful is Maude? Look at how beautiful that photo is. Um, we're not in the business of convincing others. We should know how good, um, we should know how good whatever it is that we sell is and let that sell it. That, that literally is, that literally is the case. Because again, like I said, it could be a dollar, it could be a thousand dollars. It doesn't matter. People need to see the value in it. And the only way they're going to see the value in whatever it is that you're selling is if you see the value in it first. That's why you need to convince yourself before anybody else. And technically, don't convince anybody else. You shouldn't have to. You will never have to convince anybody to buy your product or to join your business or to buy into whatever it is that you're selling if you already believe in it. And I mean like fully believe in it. Like, like yeah, I swear up, down, left, right, and sideways. Like, yeah, I believe in this product. Absolutely. I'm not just saying like say it. You have to actually believe in it, right? So... I'm going to put some more comments up because my voice, you guys, there you go. Another one, Maud, you're on a roll tonight. <laughs> Does Starbucks or any other company have to convince you? No, no, no. And that's another thing too. Like there will be people that go to Target looking to buy a pen or a, a notebook and end up walking out with a flat screen TV. Why? I don't know, because that's that's just what we do. Like It's just how we are as people. It's how we function. It's because if we want something, if we feel we need whatever that thing is, it doesn't matter how much it is. It doesn't matter. I've seen it happen all across the board, in every company, for every product, for network marketing, for MLM, direct sales, for regular brick and mortar nine to five businesses, for regular corporations like Target and Starbucks and things like that. I've seen it all. I have seen it because I have done it and I have seen it because I have, I know people that have done it. So it's just, it's just what happens. You guys, like this is how we function as humans. When we want something, we want it right then and there. We don't want to wait. Hello, Amazon. We don't want to wait. We want it and we're willing to spend the money for it. So all you're doing by being afraid of your product and its price is stopping yourself from making sales because at the end of the day, it's not your customer. It's not always your customer. A lot of the times it's you, like, I'm sorry, but it is a lot of the times it's you and it's everything that I just said. A lot of the time it's you and how you're going into that conversation. For example, okay. For example, I just said before, we have a brand new synergy CBD oil, 500 milligram. Okay. It's $119. That's a little bit of a jump from our other products, right? But it's a higher price because it's a higher quality and it's, we have amazing quality products, but it's a higher milligram, higher concentration, a stronger potency, all those things. If you know CBD oil, then you know, okay? So for example, 
How do you think I would make a sale if I went into a conversation with a potential customer and I immediately started out, one, silently thinking, they're not going to buy because it's too expensive. That's just, I haven't even said anything and I'm already thinking this. I'm already thinking in my head, it's way too expensive. They're not going to buy it. There's, there's no way. There's no way. Okay, that's number one. Number two, then I get into the conversation and they ask me the price. And instead of me saying, oh, it's 119 right? Like just that's the price, right? Instead of me saying it's 119 because of my lack of belief in it, because I haven't convinced myself yet. And because I'm thinking they're going to think it's too expensive because I think it's too expensive. Instead of saying, oh, it's 119. I'm saying, well, our other products are a lot cheaper. This one's more expensive. You know, it's, it's 119. Um, you know, I, I, not many people can buy it because I know the price. It's, it's a little bit more on like the pricier side, but you know, there's a lot of stuff that comes with it. Like you've already lost them. You've already lost them because as soon as you get to that, but the first thing you did was try and convince them of why you're, they should buy it because it's too expensive. Like, well, it is too expensive, but like, what are you doing? <laughs> what, what are you doing? Just tell them it's a thousand dollars, whatever it might be. Oh, it's a thousand dollars. When Dan sells his table, somebody asks me, how much is that table? It's $1,400. It is $1,400 because I know the amount of time that went into that table, the amount of, the, the amount of hours and, and labor that went into that table with a one man army over here. And I know the amount of, of, um, tools and the additional price on the other products that had to be used to go into making that the epoxy prices, which is ridiculous. Everything else, the legs alone were $200. I mean, I already know this, but I'm not going to get into that. How much is it? $1,400. That's the price. <laughs> That's the price. And if that person wants it, they'll buy it. If they don't, they won't buy it. <laughs> but by me convincing them, that's only going to push them away. That's only going to push them further away from actually buying the product. Another example. As you know, speaking of Dan's tables, somebody messaged me the other, we actually marked down this table. Okay. We marked down this table the other day. Somebody messaged me. I was out with my family yesterday. Actually, she messaged me and she said, is there any way that you'll take, I don't know. I think it was like, I don't know, whatever. Let's just say 250. Is there any way you'll take 250 for it? And I was like, well, this is not like, you know, we're, we're not in a, in a bazaar over here. <laughs> like, like we're not, you know, in the middle of some random country, like going back and forth in the street, like at my little market. That's not what we're doing. This is my business. This is the product. It is already marked down from what it should be. We're not going any cheaper. Like here's the price. Guess who bought the table for the full price? That woman, <laughs> Dan shipped it out today. I swear to you, she, she shipped it out today. Why? Because she tried. She didn't get it for cheaper, but I didn't try and tell her all the reasons why. I just said, no, it's this price. There you go. Like that was it. And she bought the table at the full price, the price I told her. So this is what I mean. Like when people want something, I don't care what you think their situation is. Some people, and it's very unfortunate, but there are people that will never be able to buy the product that you are selling, okay? For whatever reason, their situation that they're in, whatever their financial thing that's going on is happening, whatever it might be, okay? There will be many people that will never ever be capable of buying it, regardless of whether they want it or not. You have to just accept that, okay? You just have to understand that. This is life. But there will be way more people that regardless of how much your product is, if they want it, they will buy it. They could be broke as a joke and they will find a way because they see the value in it. They see the value and they see the need for it. And the only way that need and value is going to be shown to them is by you already believing in the product. It's by you not sitting there trying to convince yourself over and over of why people would buy this at this price. You should know why people would buy it at that price because you should buy it at that price. Does that make sense? If you wouldn't buy the product that you're selling at the price that it's at, 
then there is no way in hell your customers, your potential customers are going to buy that product at that price because they're going to be getting the info from you. And if you are not putting out the info as though you are coming from a place of this product's freaking amazing. This pro yeah, I would spend a thousand dollars on this hundred dollar product. Absolutely. From what it's been able to do for me. Hell yes. I would spend this all day long, every single day. If I could, if I had to just to get the benefits that I've been getting from it, which brings me to this. If you don't see the value in your product, are you using the product? More than likely you're not. More than likely, not always, not always. More than likely though, you're not using the product. Or maybe you've tried the product, but you're not using it consistently. Because if your product is that amazing, right? To where, oh yeah, it's a hundred thousand, it's a hundred thousand dollars, it's a hundred dollars, it's a thousand dollars, whatever it might be, okay? And you're trying to sell it to people. If you're selling a product, you should believe in that product. You need to believe in the product that you're selling. Otherwise, good luck selling the product, right? Like, I bet everybody's hating that my voice is back right now because <laughs> I'm getting really like feisty. But like, if you really want it, if you really want it, if you believe in it, Everybody else is going to believe in it. There, I've said this before too. There's a reason. There's a reason that there is a man somewhere, or maybe a woman, I don't know, or a couple, that are now living the, their best damn life because they created the pet rock. The pet rock. Somebody out there invented a pet rock, and that flew off the shelves. Why? Because of the belief behind it. Because of the advertising behind it. Because people felt that they needed a pet rock. I didn't buy one. <laughs> but I'm just saying, there's people out there that made that person wealthy beyond belief. Wealthy beyond belief. So, like, if somebody if somebody's out there selling a pet rock, do you, how do you think they did it? How do you think they did it? They did it because of their belief in it. Like... If somebody comes to me and they're like, yeah, well, I, there's so much CBD out there. Like what makes, I don't care. I don't care if there is a million different CBD brand, brands out there. Nothing's like Synergy. Nothing is like, first of all, half the, actually more CBD brands that are out there right now don't have the broad spectrum that we do. That's number one. Forget about the quality and the ingredients that we have. Forget about how it's grown. Forget about all of the other amazing things that we have that go along with Synergy CBD oil, okay? Hands down, it is some of the best stuff, the best stuff out there because it's, first of all, it's different. It's di Who has broad spectrum? I could name off quite a few companies right now that don't have broad spectrum. That, that's why if somebody says to me, oh, there's so many, oh, you know, oh, it's a saturated market. It is not. Uh, full spectrum and CBD isolate are, but broad spectrum is not. <laughs> like, that's why I know we're killing it right now. That's why I know that synergy is so different on top of the ingredients, on top of the fact that it's organic, that it's, you know, made in the USA, that how it's farmed, everything that goes into it, on top of the third party quality testing results. Like I can go all day long. So no one's ever going to have to try and convince me, convince me and tell me otherwise about this product that I'm selling because I fully believe in it. I fully believe in it because I've used it and I've fallen in love with it. So if you don't believe in your product, you need a new product. You need to find a product that you believe in because the second that you find a product that you believe in where you don't have to convince yourself price, quality, product in general, benefits, any of that, then you are going to be selling like, I can't even tell you, like hotcakes, okay? But before that can happen, you need to look at the product you're selling right now, product slash products, and see if that's actually even happening. See if the product that you are using, because I've used products before. You guys, in my old company, I used to sell the crap out of one single product because I was freaking in love with it, in love with it. For the first two and a half, three years of my time there, all I did was sell one product and I was a top seller, one product. And we had 50 products and I sold the same product all the time because of how much I loved it because of my results from it. So it doesn't matter if your company has a gazillion products, 
Find one that you can get behind and sell that all day long every day. But if you can't, if you can't get behind the product, regardless of whether it gives you benefits or no benefits or the price is cheap or the price is expensive, it's not going to matter. You need to believe in the product that you're selling. Otherwise, no one is going to believe in you. Nobody. Nobody. Which is why if you're having problems selling, you need to check yourself and look at whether or not you actually believe in what you're selling. It doesn't matter if like, the price is cheap, if the price is expensive, that's not going to matter. And it's funny because half the time I see people complain about price in companies, like I'll, listen, I have a lot of friends in, in multiple companies, okay? And I have many different conversations with them throughout the years. And I have seen time and time again, people in just random talks with me about, actually, um, people that have even messaged me for advice on stuff will even tell me, yeah, well, we have products, you know, and some of them are really good, but like, you know, I just feel like people aren't buying them because they're too expensive. Well, how good are they? Are you in love with them? Like if somebody told you tomorrow that like, well, Mary's store down the street is selling the exact same products, would you run and stop selling your products and leave your company in fear? Because, oh no, Mary's products. Or would you be like, freak that, I don't care. Our product is top of the line. Like, I don't care what Mary has. We blow them out of the water. That's the difference. That's that's the difference between believing in your product that you're selling and selling your product. There's a big difference because when you believe in the product that you're selling, you don't actually sell it. You don't actually sell the product. You share the product. And that's how you sell it. But when you don't believe in the product, all you're worried about is selling it. You have to understand the difference. Have to have to. I'm just like moving. I'm not, I'm moving my arms so I could like talk less. I know that makes no sense to anybody, but it made sense in my head. All right. So does that all make sense? My voice is going. I'm going to look through these comments really fast. Bye mod. Have a good night. Um, see that used to be me. I was so scared to tell somebody the price again, again, like Andrea has said before your version or your, how you look at a $100 bill is not going to be the same as how somebody else looks at a $100 bill. It's just not. But the problem is that when you go into the sale, you're approaching it as though you are the potential customer. You cannot be the buy, the seller and also the potential customer at the same time. You have to listen to your potential customer. If they're saying, I need this, this, and this, don't stop them and say, why they need that even though it's x amount of dollars don't you're answering questions that aren't even asked and that's the problem well that's one of the problems it's, it's a lot of problems i want the pumpkin spice. <laughs> see i want the pumpkin spice and i'll pay the prices exactly i saw somebody today i saw somebody today and i screenshot it wait i'm gonna wait, listen I don't even know if she's on here. I don't even know if she knows who I am, but I follow her and I screenshot it because I saw it and I was like, oh, well, that's really convenient for tonight's post. So <laughs> Cora, I don't know if you're on here. I doubt it. I don't even think you know who I am, but she posted a photo and it's a perfect example. Posted a photo on like this completely like empty road. Okay. And she said, Brandon bound just for Starbucks. I need help. For those of you who see no problem, it's a 45 minute drive one way for a $6 drink. I legit screenshot that earlier. It was about four hours ago when I took the screenshot of it for this very reason, just to prove to you that there are people out there that if they want their freaking Starbucks, they're going to go and drive literally 45 minutes one way to get a $6 Starbucks drink just to get it because they know and feel the value in that. Just like Andrea wants all the pumpkin spice things and she will probably get on a plane to get all the pumpkin spice things. This is how we work as humans. When we want something, we want it, which is why Amazon is so successful because if somebody wants something, all they have to do is click a button and get it. Do you understand? This is why when you go to Target, you go in there for one thing and you come out with 25 other things that you didn't even think you needed, but just because it's in front of you and you're like, well, I might need, I don't know, a, a, a dog basket in my office later. 
You don't, you don't know. You have no idea. So that's why I'm saying you can't put yourself in your customer's shoes with your beliefs. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So before I go, let's recap. I love recapping. Um, mindset. Thank you, Haley. All right, let's recap. First of all, you need to convince yourself for anybody else, right? And again, I hate the word convince because you should never ever have to convince anybody to buy your product or join your team if you're in network marketing, okay? If you have to convince them to join, you'll have to convince them to work. If you have to convince somebody to buy, you'll have to convince them to use it. It's the same thing. It's the same exact thing, okay? So you just have to convince yourself. That's the, that's the person you need to focus on and that's the person that you need to worry about when it comes to selling. You need to be convinced of the product that you're selling, okay? You need to actually use the product that you're selling and fall in love with it. Fall in love with it. And if you can't fall in love with it, you need to sell another product because the best sales that you will ever have will come from your love and belief for whatever that product is. If you're not 100% behind it, your customers are not going to be 100% behind you because they need to believe that you are in love with it in order for them to believe that they need it. Okay. Um, what else? What else? What else? I think that's it. I think that's it. I don't know. I'm sure there's more, but my voice is going. My voice is shot. So I'm going to go. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you for hanging out with me at 1042 PM. Um, I may or may not do a live tomorrow. Tomorrow's my wedding anniversary. So, um, I may be on, I may not be, but either way, have a great night. Um, really change your mindset about selling and really look at what you're doing. Look at the amount of sales you have. Look at how you go into a conversation. Also to really see how this stuff is working. Look back on any conversations that you've had recently or in the past with potential customers. See which ones actually bought from you and what you said prior to that and see which ones did not buy from you, did not get back to you, were not really interested in what, excuse me, what you said prior to those conversations. And then you could see, I guarantee you, like I would bet my life on the fact that you were trying to convince them because you were not convincing enough yourself. Okay, have a great night. I'll talk to you guys later. And if you think that you have somebody in your life <laughs> or in your business that needs to hear this, if you have a team that needs to hear this, that, that is like, why am I not making sales? Share along, share this video, do what you need to do, because I promise you it's all in the mindset. It is all in the mindset and the belief and the energy and all of those good things. All right. I will talk to you guys later and uh, have a good night. Bye.